Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I have a few little updates for you as well as what I'm gonna make for hashtag make that look 2020. All right, I thought I would just pop on today just for a little bit to show you what I've been up to because I have made quite a bit. I've been working on little bits and bobs, nothing spectacular, I don't know, I mean, some cute stuff but more just stuff that needed to get done and uh, it's all kind of accumulated and I thought this would be a good time to show you. So, first of all, let me show you my, let's see here if I can get it to, that's ah, pretty good. So this is my first Cali shirt. This is in Atelier Brunette cotton that I got at Nunoya in Barcelona. So I'll put in some photos of me wearing it. I've had this pattern forever and I've seen so many great ones and I wanted to do this not really as a muslin because it's special fabric, but I wanted to use it to sort of try out the fit on the Cali because I might want to make it into a dress. Yeah, so here it is. Um, I love the flecks of mustard in this. It's like gray and black and mustard. Now, in order to get this, I believe that this takes 1.3, 1.25 meters for this version. So this is the cropped version and I squeezed it out of 78 centimeters. <laughs> and I do mean squeezed. And I'll put in a video of me um, getting ready to cut it. All right, so here I have this Atelier Brunette cotton lawn that I got at Nunoya. I ordered 70 centimeters and I think this was the end of the bolt and so they gave me 78 centimeters, which in this case, those centimeters are gonna make all the difference. So um, one thing I've already done is I've split on the length and line the front because it's a little bit too cropped for me in the front. Um, Lauren Guthrie adds five centimeters to hers. I think I might have to shorten that just a little bit. I think I'm gonna end up at like three centimeters because I need the space. This back yoke here is gonna flip over to the other side. So this is supposed to take 1.4, 1.4 meters, 1.4 yards? Wait. Yeah, 1.4 meters. <laughs> and I'm trying to get it at a 78 centimeters. So I'm gonna have to make a couple of changes. Now, like I said, I'm, I'm lengthening it, which obviously is taking more fabric. And I'm doing two pockets, which is also taking more fabric. Um, this yoke here will flip over and this collar here will flip over. Um, I also realize I'm missing a piece out of this eye pattern. So I have really tried to make this work. Now I'm gonna do the button pocket in white and I'm going to do the, uh, well I think in white anyway, or a different fabric. And then I'm gonna do the two facings, the two hem facings in another fabric. And other than that, I think I should be able to get this whole thing out of what I have. So yeah, I really, really worked around to get this out of this little material. Um, however, I did add length to the front because I knew that it would be too short in the body. This pocket is supposed to have this really cute like triangle detail that I really wish I could have gotten, but I couldn't. Um, the other thing I did was I cut this neckband in white and I also cut um, this here, the, the two facings in white, which doesn't bother me at all. Um, it has this nice box pleat at the back. It has the, um, the burrito yoke. This does stick out a little bit. Maybe that means that I stretched out the neckband or it might just be because there's a heavier fabric on the inside. I don't notice it when I'm wearing it, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I wore this today. It's just a nice little, you know, throw over, pop over top. Looks really good with high-waisted things. I think I wore it today with my high-waisted jean skirt. And yeah, so I'm really happy with that. A couple of makes for my kids, so actually more adjustments. So um, Audrey, I went shopping with Audrey uh, a couple days ago. She's, you know, a teenager now, and I just find that the best way for us to agree on what she should be wearing is for us to go together and to buy things that both she likes and I like. So in this case, there were a couple things that I got that just needed a little bit of an adjustment. There was a really good sale, and so of course some of the sizes were gone. The first thing is this cute pair of pants, which I altered. They, they, they fit great except for the waist, and so I took off the waistband uh, along the back. I increase the darts and then I put it back on and you can see here that they look really cute on her and she loves them. She even said, mom, I'm starting to dress like you. And I 
was afraid to say yes because then she'd stop doing it. Um, but yeah, it turned out, it turned out really well. And then the other thing that I got for her was this aviator suit, boiler suit. Um, I kind of think of it more like an aviator suit because of the color. And this is in 100% viscose. I think these were both, I think it was, you bought, you bought two and you got one free. They did have a version in the store that was shorts and short sleeved, but there wasn't one in her size. And she tried on one that was smaller. This was actually in the women's section. She tried on the double extra small and it was just a little bit too tight. And she was like, oh, it's not too bad. It's not too tight. And I was like, sweetheart, if it's already too tight on you, there's just no point because you're going to grow. You're still only 13. So I made her put that one back and we tried on the full length one, full length arms, full length legs. And that one um, fit her well, but of course not really appropriate for summer. So I cut off the arms and the legs at the appropriate length. I then cut cuffs from the leftover fabric and ta-da, hashtag mommy magic. This is what it looks like. So she is very pleased, as am I. She's wearing it right now or I'd show it to you, but she loves, she loves it so much and she's already told me that she's going to wear it lots, so success. Another bit of unselfish sewing is I have a really good friend who unfortunately is moving back to her home country of Hungary. And so um, I'm really sad to see her go. And she has a favorite dress that I op offered to copy for her. So here's a picture of the original dress. I don't have it with me anymore. And um, I did copy that. Now I'm, I just have a little clip of me copying that. I'll put in here. Okay, so please don't mind the mess. That's, that's just reality. <laughs> So I actually got an order from Mango today for my kids and my husband, uh, Not nothing for me, but I can't make everyone's clothes or I will go insane and lose my hobby. So I like to buy them clothes when that, from places that I think are good. Um, so these are the large paper envelopes, heavy paper envelopes that come with the order and I've just cut them up and flattened them out. So to start off, I've taken the back of the dress and I folded it in half I have pressed it along the back fold line and I have pinned it to the corresponding seam on the other side. So if I flip this over, it would look exactly the same. You can see at the top here we have some gathers and so I'm just going to have to kind of account a little bit for those gathers, make it just a little bit wider to account for that. My guess is that this is going to continue in the same vein and just by not pulling it in, I'm going to get what the original pattern looked like. This dress is pretty simple, really, at least I think so. Maybe, maybe at the end of this video I won't be saying that. Um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get out my ruler and I'm going to trace along. I don't think I'm gonna show you me tracing this large piece, but I will show you a smaller piece later. So that's how I started to copy the pattern. Um, I will show you this process at some point, but I didn't really have time to do it um, during that process. That was a little bit more tricky because it had some interior seams that made it a little bit trickier to copy. Totally possible, but just a little bit tricky. So I don't think that that's a good first project for anyone who is wanting to copy something ready to wear. But I made a muslin for her and here's the muslin. Actually, I have it here. So I'll put a picture of it in first. And, uh, and here it is here. This is actually Indian cotton from Meter Meter that was, um, was sent to me and it wasn't exactly what I thought it was. And so I was going to return it, but it was during the quarantine and very kindly Pia of Meter Meter said to me, please keep it and see if you can work with it anyway and do something else. And she also replaced the fabric. So great. And I really, really do love them. You'll see some fabric from them later. Um, and so here is my version. Now this version doesn't have a pocket because I ran out of fabric. I only had a meter and a half of this. And while you can squeak it out of a meter and a half, two meters is probably a better. Um, and I haven't yet finished the armholes. This was really just for her to try on. So she tried it on, it fit her really well. Um, so we're, I'm gonna finish this one off so she can just wear it as a house dress. And then here are the two fabrics I'm going to make it out of. The first one is this Katya fabric. Now we looked for a linen or linen viscose blend or cotton viscose blend, which, which would have more of the drape of the original. And Sylvie had, you know, a color palette in mind and I just couldn't find anything that would fit in that color palette, especially at this time when um, things are so backed up in terms of shipping. And some of this did take quite a while to get to me. 
So right now I have this Katya cotton. This is like a quilting cotton. I'm gonna try, tell me if you have a trick for this. I've been looking online on how to soften cotton to hopefully get a bit more drape out of it. And I read soaking it in baking soda, like a lot of baking soda. So I might get some baking soda and soak it tonight and then cut it tomorrow, I'm thinking. Anyway, it's really pretty. Um, but I wanted to have a little bit of drape. So one of the differences I'm gonna do with the original dress is I'm gonna put two ties on the sides so that she can pull it in at the waist if she wants because it has less drape. It's kind of falling straight from the bust and it looks a little maternity-ish. So I want her to, be, her to be able to pull in the waist. So I'm gonna add little ties to the side. That's with that one. The other one is also from Meter Meter. And when I looked at this on the website, so if you look at this here, it looks like a light kind of blush color, right? But then when you look at it as a, in a pile, it's very peachy. So it's not that it wasn't accurate on the website, it's just kind of a bit of an odd fabric. And she wanted a blush color, mostly white, and this to me just feels very peachy. It also has this really interesting, some of the threads are white and some of the threads are pink. I tried to bleach this, <laughs> so hard yesterday. I, I did three different bleach tests, nothing worked. I then soaked it in even more bleach, nothing worked. It, it's, and it's cotton with a little bit of elastin, so I don't know why it didn't work, but it didn't work. Thankfully, she likes this, and so it's gonna be fine, but again, I would like to soften it even more because it doesn't have the drape. So I'm gonna do the same thing, go out to today in a bit and get some baking soda and try and soak them both. I'm gonna do this one a tiny bit differently so that she doesn't end up with, well, her original, the muslin, the blue and green one, and this all the same. I want it to have a little bit different. So with this one, I'm right now the dress hits just above the knee. I'm gonna add one bigger ruffle at the bottom so that it falls just below the knee. And I'm also thinking I might add little cap sleeves because this one has, um, most of them are sleeveless. And so I thought adding a cap sleeve might be nice. I'm gonna look at it and see if that's gonna be easy to do. I don't wanna ruin it, but um, yeah, I think, I think, I don't see why not. And then also the ties. So this will give it a little, you know, a slightly different feel so that they're not all the same. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do that for her. She leaves uh, early next week, so I've gotta get on it. <laughs> Under the category of learning experience, I don't like to say fail, learning experience are my P my original Pietra shorts. So if you'll remember, I made these during the quarantine out of some linen from Ribe St. Casals in town and the size was too large and then I tried to take it on the side. In photos it looks fine, but the crotch is just too long, like just plain and simple. And my second pair, even that I sized down, still the crotch is probably too long. So I took these all the way apart. And then I tried to compare the crotch seam with the crotch seam of a pair of pants that fit me really well. And I tried to adjust them and they still don't really fit. So, and I also don't really love this elastic back. It just looks really bunchy. I don't love that either. So, Third time's a charm, fourth time, fifth time. I'm gonna use the skirt, the jeans to skirt tutorial from Stitch Sisters that I did for my other jean skirt, and I'm gonna try and turn this into a skirt. It'll be a mini skirt, but that's fine, because I still love the pockets. Here's the thing with this pattern. I love the high waist, I love the flat front, I love the pockets, I love the front facing, but the rest of it just doesn't fit me very well. And so I think if I were to make these again, I would be more likely to try and um, incorporate the pocket pattern into another pair of pants than to cut these pants again. Cause I just feel like they just might not be my pants. Oh well. Okay, last but not least, hashtag make that look 2020. We are on, we are on until July 7th. So if you haven't seen my previous videos, which you probably have, but I'll give you a really quick overview. Make something inspired by ready to wear. It could be a picture you've seen on Pinterest, a picture from a magazine, a catalog photo, you know, something you saw at Walmart. It does not matter what it is. Just take a ready to wear garment of any kind and use it to inspire something you make yourself. 
okay? Um, it could be an exact replica that you wanna work really hard on like fine tuning all the details and doing all the detective work. And it could just be, you know what? I love that silhouette. I love that shape. I love that, you know, that color, um, whatever, and use it as a jumping off point. Then once you're done by July 7th, you want to go over on Instagram, post a picture of your make, a picture of the original, credited if you can, as well as just a little blurb on what, what you did for the challenge and put on hashtag make that look 2020. Um, and that way you can be entered to win. So we have three patterns from the makerist.com as well as one PDF pattern or printed pattern from Victory Patterns. And I'm hosting this challenge with the lovely Whitney of Wit Makes. I will link you to her finished object below that she just posted today. That's really, really cute. And yeah, so you guys saw last time the things that I was thinking of. Um, I had lots and lots of different ideas. And in the end, I have one that I've fully decided to do. And then after that, I might have another one as well. But right now I have so much on the go that I'm trying to just pick one thing. So a lot of you loved this Bondi dress. And it was the very first one on the list in, in a paprika colored linen. Um, it's very short. And as a matter of fact, I think a bunch of you actually called it the Bondi jumper because romper, because anything that's short should be a romper. Um, in fact, I may make this into a romper. I'm not even sure yet, but let me show you the fabric first. So this fabric came from Meter Meter. So this is, um, while I was ordering the fabric for my friend Sylvie, I, I saw this and I decided to treat myself. This is super drapey. This would have been great for her, except it's not her color palette. So for this, um, I was trying to stick with patterns that I already own, but I was on the lookout and someone turned me on to um, Berta Style Dot Rue, the Russian Berta Style. And it was a pattern actually for another one. And I'll put this in here. You might want to, I'll put in the original as well as the pattern, which is brilliant. I believe uh, the lady's name was Amanda who recommended it to me. Yeah, so Amanda messaged me the, um, or emailed me the link to this pattern. This pattern is a Berta style pattern and it matches very much the last dress that the Frankie dress that um, I had put in my video. So that's definitely a possibility. I did buy that pattern. Um, that's definitely a possibility to use in my gray hemp once this is done. But I thought for the um, challenge, first I wanted to make this because honestly it just looked so nice and cool and it is so hot already. <laughs> So on top of that, BertaStyle.ru was having a big sale. Now, yes, it's the Russian version of exactly all the same patterns. And when you go to BertaStyle.com, the patterns are $4.99 each. And when you go to BertaStyle.es, they're I think four euros and 99 cents each. Um, on BertaStyle.ru, they are 200 rubles, which, how much is that again? Two euros and 56 cents. Each. Okay, so that's already about half price of other websites. On top of that, they were having a 75% off sale, so all of the patterns were 50 rubles. And then on top of that, when you sign up for their website, and this actually works now too, if you go to their website and sign up, you will get a discount code, which is PROMO70, which I can tell you because if you sign up to get patterns anyway, you're signing up for their website, so PROMO70 you get another, you get this discount code and I just assumed that you couldn't combine them. You could combine them. <laughs> so it was like 200 rubles down to 50 rubles and then 70% off that. So in the end, I got 20 Berta style patterns for three euros and 82 cents total. One of them is this one here. And uh, I think this would be perfect with this to recreate that Bondi dress. Now, like I just said, I'm now even more focused on being comfortable in this heat and protected. Um, and so I'm going to kind of, I haven't gone through a whole Spanish summer before and I'm already feeling really, really hot and overheated. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna make this a little longer. I'm probably gonna make it a little roomier um, so that I can wear it with the belt to have it more fitted, but I can have it without the belt and it'll just sort of gloss, like skim over the body, which I find a lot more comfortable. So I'm probably going to use a combination of this pattern and something else 
to create something similar to the Bondi, but definitely with the two sets of pockets and probably also with the covered button placket as long as I can get away with it. I'm considering adding sleeves. Um, yeah, I'm not, so, I'm not so sure yet, but this is what I'm making for the challenge. And if I have time, I'm gonna do one more as well. Probably that one that I just showed you, the copy of the Frankie, but I very much like to live in the moment with my sewing because it's my hobby and I want it to be, you know, mostly about joy and less about stress and pressure <laughs> if I can avoid it. Well, for now, for me, the sun is definitely shining and I will definitely be sewing most of the afternoon. I will take you along with me whenever I can and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.